Scoot closer, scoot closer this way. We got some questions for you. Yeah, All right. Oh, shoot, she's tall. I'm tall. Oh, well. I can sit right here, though. <laughs> Come oh, over closer okay. to me. Here. Here. How's it when there I sit? Go. Much better. Okay. Cute. Gosh, she looks great. She does look great. She's really funny. Hate her. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <don't know. laughs> okay. Tell me when you're ready. I'm ready. Or when you're ready. We've been recording this whole time. Oh, we have been. Okay. <laughs> have you had your coffee today? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't throw that one. Yeah, in. you I thought know, you were funny. No. Yeah, I knew it was okay. funny. Okay, so I'm really curious. What compelled you to do this movie? Um, what did compel me to do this movie? Yeah, you know, I was compelled to film an impromptu interview that I did with Dan Pink. I have no idea why I brought my camera. I just knew he was going to say something that I may want to remember. Um, so I had asked him what his passion was in life. Mm -hmm. And he really surprised me when he didn't say some of the things that I was expecting, you know, oh, I'm a teacher, my passion is teaching people, um, or I'm a writer, I just want to get the word out. What he said was, I have no idea. That's such a big question. You know, that that is a question that really frightens me. Um, so I can't really tell you what my passion is. I can just tell you what's next. And I felt at that moment that he really, he really understood something that I wanted to know more about. Because I think for the most part, a lot of us live that way. We, we tend to think that we have to have this passion, this, you know, this thing that motivates us to do everything. But in reality, it's just, what's exciting right now? What can move us forward? And maybe we have a big idea, you know? I want to be happy, or, you know, I, I want to help people communicate better, whatever that is, but we don't really have this, this is my purpose in life. It just, life is more fluid than that. Mm -hmm. And we've kind of been taught that it isn't, and you're supposed to have a goal, and you're supposed to plan all these steps in advance. And that's just not the way it is. At least for me, it isn't. So do you think like in the process of making this film, you've learned or your views have changed in terms of doing what you, pursuing what's important to you? Like how have your views evolved, I guess, from the beginning of making this film and after all the people you've met? Absolutely my views have evolved. They can't not evolve. Um, you know, making, making this film, for me, um, what are they doing? Do they, they're, they're washing the roof <laughs> with a <laughs> spray nozzle. Um, like for, <laughs> for me, um, you know, because I kind of sourced this film just like piece by piece, I didn't decide these are the people I'm going to interview. Mm -hmm. It was just, uh, you know, this is interesting. Well, who, who's after that that might know about this? You know, who's after that that might know about this? Uh, you know, when I started, it was more about, you know, life purpose. You know, what, mm -hmm. life purpose, what does that mean? And now it's kind of evolved to, you know, how has technology changed us in this purpose that we're seeking? Um, whereas now I just interviewed someone who talked about how your online life belongs to you and how it becomes more individualized that way. And then he's kind of set me on this path of ambient, uh, and ambient intimacy. And it just is all of these tiny steps that have some really big philosophical questions behind them. And I kind of want to find out where this, like this leap forward in the way that we're thinking matches this leap that all of us are taking spiritually as well. I just feel like we're, we're changing from this we're changing from this industrial revolution. We had this industrial revolution, and then we called it something else the information age. But here's the industrial revolution, and you know, 100 years later, here comes the contextual revolution, and we're just like turning upside down all of the things we think about and the way that we're thinking about them. And I'm really interested as to how that process happened, how it's happening, why it's happening, and how people are changing because of it, how we're changing the way we view things. I have one more question. Okay. Okay. Well, just to tag on to that one, is that, so do you think there's like a model, like from all the people that you've interviewed, that's what I'm most curious about, like do you think that there's a model poster boy, oh, oh, wow. poster boy or poster woman, like kind of, like what are the, uh, what's the th common thread in, for people in the contextual revolution? I think the common thread for people in the contextual revolution is a lot of them don't live by this 
a big goal model. Make your big goals and live, you know, take this step, then this step, then this step, then this step. I'd say that the one thing that is like the, the poster child of my film is that all of these people tend to say, what's next? What's next? What's next? And they go with the flow of what's next. That's it. That's the end. Okay. That's it. Mm -hmm. That whole rib thing, whatever. Are you still getting me? Oh wow! Oh. Wow! <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. I'll come down the steps like Miss America with my pigtails. Please wave. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs>